Hey everyone, Dakota Adney here, and today I'm going to show you guys very quickly how I did the effect right here that you can see. And um, you saw this in my Julius Caesar video, and it's just kind of a bunch of people in a auditorium or whatever. There's depth between the people, there's perspective within the room, and it's all the same guy, if you didn't notice. Now if you haven't seen the full video, it's very highly advised that you click this link at the top of the page here and watch the full video. So let's jump right into After Effects and get this thing going. First I'm going to take my original footage and drop it into a new composition. Zoom in here and as you can see I have all of these little green dots around here and these are my tracking points. These were just fluorescent green stickers that I got at Walmart. Uh, they're like the things that you would put prices on at a uh, yard sale or something like that. Just anything that stands out and compared to your environment that you can stick. And the first thing we're going to do is track one of these points. We're actually going to end up tracking each one of these points separately, but the first one here we're just going to go to Layer, New, Null Object, uh, and I'm on my tracking pan already, so just select your original footage and hit Track Motion. And then zoom in here and uh, select it. You may have to adjust the size, just whatever you need to do. And hit Track Forward over here on the right. And I'm going to come back as soon as this one's done. Okay, I'm back, and you can see the motion path here as I've tracked my point throughout the footage. And the next thing we're going to do is go over here to the right on your tracking pane. Uh, if it's not there, you can go to View and get your tracking pane out. Uh, and we're just going to hit Edit Target and make sure that Null 14 is selected, your null object. Hit OK, and you can leave everything else the same, and hit Apply. And X and Y is just fine. And now you can see that our null object is tracked to that point. Now here comes the time consuming part. We're going to have to do this to each and every one of our, uh, I think there's like 12 tracking points in this scene. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this recording because of YouTube's time limits and I'm going to come back as soon as I have my points tracked. Okay, I'm back and you can see that I have all of my little red null objects here floating along, stuck to my tracking points. Now these ones over here on the edges I left because um, there wasn't even really enough room to actually track them. And you can, um, well, I'll get to it later in the tutorial, but if they're really close and it really doesn't have any tracking information, we can pretty much just eyeball it and maybe parent it to one of these other ones to get it to look right. Alright, so next thing, we're going to take our person still right here, and this is actually just a very short clip of my actor here. Let me solo it, get those things off. And you can do video on this, I mean, you could get a green screen and put it up in front of your actor if you wanted him moving or something. But I didn't really have the time for that, so I just took a little uh, frame or a little clip like this, and I'm just going to right click it, hit time, and freeze frame. And then I can drag it out, so we basically have a picture here of the sky. It doesn't move. That way we don't have to have a green screen or we have, don't have to rotoscope or anything. So let me mask this guy out. It's going to be the next thing we're going to do. Uh, and super fast mode here. Okay, now when you get right down here when you see this shadow, you're really going to want to get the shadow because that's going to make it look like the actor actually fits into the scene and is sitting in the pew. So, well, we have a little problem with this green thing, but uh, I'm going to go right around the green thing and then just get as much of the shadow as I can. We're going to feather it out so it doesn't have to be exact and close it off. Okay, so now we have a guy here. And you can mess with the feathering to get the fine details because my mask looks pretty crappy right now. So let me do like five or something. His head's kind of odd shaped, but um, I'm go ahead and unsolo him. And this is basically going to be our audience. We're just going to scale him down, and you can put him wherever you want for this first one. But I'm just going to scale him down. Now I, when I did it, I used the guy that's actually sitting here, the real one, to judge the scaling. Uh, let's see, he's about the same size there. And then for each time you come back a pew, I just scaled him up like 2% or something. So 36. And just set him right about where your green thing is. He's a little bit small, but just scale him up a little bit more. Okay, and then whenever he's where you want him, we're going to go ahead and parent it. So you make sure that the guy is selected, and then hit the parent whip tool over here and then drag it to the corresponding null object. This one actually is null 11 here. 
So take your person still and parent it to null 11. And now, voila. You're, wait, let me. Sorry, let me zoom out here. Your little man is tracked to that spot. Now it probably looks kind of jumpy on the screen, but trust me, he's stuck. And we're going to do this for the other 10 or so uh, null objects. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I have all my guys stuck to their tracking points here. And um, what I did to make it look a little more realistic, since I didn't actually have the video of each scene, is when you have your man that you keep duplicating for every point, you can make him a 3D object by clicking the little cube over here. And when you do that, you'll get a little Y, X, and a Z. And you can take your rotation tool by hitting W or clicking it up there, and you can rotate him. Let me zoom in here real quick. You can rotate him on the Y axis so you can flip him kind of invert the image to give them a little bit of a different look. I mean, people may notice, but I didn't have video in this instance, so it's going to have to work. Alright, and you can, um, the fine detailing and stuff, like the color and how blurry it should be, can be done later. Like, the guy's way up here should be a little bit blurry. You can kind of judge it off the guy that's really sitting there. And then as it gets closer to you, it'll get clearer. And then this guy way back here may be a little bit more blurry as well. Now, there's one more thing I did to make it look a little better, is as I went through the scene, uh, you probably noticed on the orig other on the uh, effect preview, there was guys in the major foreground area that were passing by the camera. And all I did for that, uh, since I didn't have a tracking point, is I just took one of my guys, like say this guy way in the front, and I just duplicated it just like I did earlier for all of my things. And I just scaled them way up, and took him to about right there, just so he's right off of the camera. And you can hit P to bring up your position palette and make a keyframe where you start it, right here. Really. But just go about, depending on how fast your camera's moving by, maybe two seconds, make a keyframe and then move him across the screen like you just passed by. Now you want to make sure you got a pretty straight line. You don't want him like going uphill or something. Okay, and then you make sure he's at the very top. You want to layer your um, your layers so that the guy in the front is actually going to be on the bottom because all of the other layers are going to pass in front of him. So this guy that's in the major foreground that we just made, he's going to be on the very top because he's going to cover over everything else. And he doesn't really look too good, so I went to color correction, or effect color correction, and levels, and then you can just play with it and, whoops, wrong way. I just darkened him a little bit. I don't know why he would be darker. I think it just looked better to me. I don't know. Maybe because he's just closer to the camera. Alright, now that he's darkened, that's pretty much the majority of the effect. You can go ahead and turn off all of your null objects. You don't want to see them. So now you just have your guys. Uh, except for the little green dots. We need to get rid of those because you don't want people to see them in the video. So you can select the bottom thing on your um, composition here then hit shift and hit the top thing and hit control shift C or you can also go to pre-compose by hitting composition I believe it pre-compose but control shift C is quicker and you can move all attributes and hit OK and that basically just takes all of your layers and combines them into one right here and now we're gonna go ahead and hit control D to duplicate this or edit duplicate I just wanna make two of them they're both gonna be the same and on this top one, you're going to take your rectangular mask tool at the top and make a mask just where your green stops. So my first green's right there, so I'm just going to make a mask right there. And this is basically what it's doing. It's uh, The top layer is just half of it. And it's the half that doesn't have any of the green dots in it. And then the bottom half is the whole thing or that fills the rest of it. So on the bottom one, you can hit effect, keying, key light 1.2, and then select your green color using your dropper tool. And that makes him black, but you can still kind of see him. So you need to put something underneath because the black is actually transparency. You can see right there when you turn that off. So layer, new, solid. And then I just picked a color that would be where the holes are. 
So we'll just pick a brownish that's right around there. And then drag it underneath. And they're hidden pretty well. It all just depends on what color you pick and how well you can match your scene. And you can mess with the um, effects, or I'm sorry, the um, settings in your key light. So like the screen gain and everything, that'll all change the look of how they're hidden and how they're feathered and stuff like that. And that was just a quick rundown of how I did the effect. You can take a lot more time on this. You can do it a lot better than I did. But we are on a time limit because this assignment was due within like five days and we had to do everything very quickly. And this tutorial is not limited to creating an audience in a church. You can do those little tracking points for just about anything that you need to track. I mean, there are hundreds of different ways you could use this um, effect. So uh, I hope I can do more tutorials for you guys in the future. This was Dakota Adney. Thanks for watching.